Hello everyone, David A. Cox here with Tech Talk America, and today we are talking about our top favorite iOS 10 features. We want to share these with all of you. Originally, we are going to do just a top 10 list, but there's way too many, so we are just going to share all of our favorites with you in absolutely no particular order. Now, if you have trouble following along, we always try to go that extra little mile, and that's why we create PDF guides for you. This one's free. It's in the description of the video, so click on it. Uh, I've got it stored on Dropbox. It's really, really simple, and anything that I should mention uh, during the class, things that I prepare to say, things that I just happen to say because I tend to improv a lot. Um, we'll put links to everything there as well. We'll put also in the description of the video, but some of you like to have it handy, so we'll do that too. So here we go. Without any further ado, first favorite feature is the simplest one, raise to wake. Now if your phone is laying on the table and you pick it up, it's going to automatically just light up for you. Can't demo that here because of how we're rigged up, but it's a pretty simple feature automatically enabled, so ready, good to go out of the box. Next one is widgets. Now widgets are basically little extensions of apps, so it's based on what you already have in your phone. So I'm going to show you just a couple of my favorite ones, give you a few recommendations, and show you how to move them around, add them, remove them, all that good stuff. So to get to the widgets, you're going to be on your main home screen on your phone, and you're going to swipe from left to right. Okay, and so you can see some of mine here. Weatherbug, I think is a fantastic one. I find it's typically a little bit more accurate than uh, the built-in Apple weather app, but that's just my opinion. Uh, batteries, I know not a lot of you fans of my little battery case here, but I do love my battery case. I don't care what you say. Next one I want to give a, a, a strong recommendation to. So I have Verizon, that's basically the only option when you apparently live at the end of the earth. But for all of you, you all have different carriers. If you don't have your carrier's app, I would strongly recommend that you download it. This is the reason why. You can very easily monitor how much you've gone through your data for the month. Otherwise, you got to send text messages, you know, and it's just kind of a pain in the butt. So if you have a carrier, well, you have to have a carrier. Download their app, put in their widget, love it. News, of course, uh, maps, destinations, uh, some of these I just kind of put in for examples, okay? And uh, you just saw, that's one of the, that's the class that we were supposed to be releasing today. We're doing a class on Hider 2, pretty cool uh, app, we got that coming up. Now, if you scroll down to the very, very bottom of the list, you will find the edit button. So this is where you're going to go to add or remove them or also move them around. So you go through here, you can see I have weather bug on top. If instead maybe I want my battery, I can just press and hold those three little lines that you see right there and just drag it up. You can move them around in whatever order you want. Now, if you decide you don't want it, like let's say I don't really care much about uh, map destinations, hit the little minus symbol, remove, and it's gone. Now what if you want to get it back or you want to see the ones that you have access to but don't currently have running? Well, scroll down to the bottom of the list and here it says more widgets. So you can go through any of these if you want to add them. Just tap on the little plus symbol. So maybe like Hue. We're going to talk about Hue at some point. It's a kind of an interesting little system, although there's another one I like better now. Uh, and when you're done, hit done. So that right there is widgets. Check it out. It's pretty cool. Next one we're going to talk about is the ability to delete stock apps. There are those apps that some of you who followed our classes for a while, you may know that I have a little folder. Where is it here? I have a little folder here. Uh, there it is called crap right there. So if you see a stock app that you no longer want, like, I don't know, like voice memos or Oops, sorry, I always accidentally do that instead. Some of them you cannot remove, by the way. You can't remove settings, you can't remove messages, you can remove mail. However, I would strongly recommend that you not remove the built-in mail program because it's kind of an essential part of the whole ecosystem. And um, if you use like a share button on a different app, currently it doesn't default to like the real one, or whichever one you decide to use. I'm guessing that's an update that's coming very, very soon, but currently it doesn't work. Um, so you can go through, and if you don't want you know, the iTunes store, you can get rid of it. And if you ever want to get it back, you can find them back in the App Store and just re-download them for free. I want to go over a couple quick, quick settings here. So let's go back here to settings. There we go. And uh, I want you to go into general, okay? First one we're going to do is in general. This is actually one that in the past I had recommended turning on, and now I'm recommending turning it off. It's a double negative, that's why I get a little confused. So when you're in the general menu here, go here into accessibility, and from there you're gonna scroll down a little bit, 
and go here into reduce motion. In the past, I have always recommended turning that on. Now I'm gonna say, turn it off. Some of you will get that reference. Go back. Next one I wanna give is also here in accessibility. If you scroll down here, uh, we have home button. So basically this is kind of a cool feature so that now not only when you pick up your phone is it going to light up, but if you have your finger on the fingerprint sensor, um, you don't have to even press it. It'll just automatically open up and be good to go. It just makes getting into your phone that much faster. Next feature I want to go over is uh, in display and brightness. Let's go back here. I'm actually already running this feature here. So if my phone looks a little bit different, this is why. If you scroll down to the very bottom, here we have display zoom. Now this is a feature that has always existed in the larger iPhones, but is a new feature to the smaller ones. So if you have, like I have a 6S, my 7 arrives tomorrow, uh, then if you want everything to be just a little bit bigger, this is how you can do it. So tap here where it says view, and you can see kind of the, the difference. We have standard and zoom view. You also notice that you can swipe. There's three different example screens. So here's like an example of what text messages would look like. Here's the zoom version. There's the standard version. So personally, I'm a fan of zoom. So I decided to leave it in. In fact, uh, the last time I recorded this class, I hit set and then forgot that it's going to turn off my iPhone in the process. So we had to take, do a take two. Next feature I want to go over is that, really just to mention, that Siri now has his, her, its own controls. So right here, Siri, there you go. Siri, who just never ever seems to understand me. There, there are so many, we, we, I think Siri and I need some therapy because clearly we're not doing so good on the communication, at least not lately. Um, one thing I want to mention here in Siri settings, these are all basically pretty standard, but if you go down here to app support, these, these are the apps that you currently have that Siri now has the ability to communicate with. Now, I want to make something clear. This video is being recorded the day after iOS 10's initial release. So um, a lot of the app makers out there haven't really had the time to update their apps so that Siri can now you know, talk to everything. So I would expect the number of apps uh, that have this feature available to go way, way up in the near future, the next coming weeks. So just wanted to always mention that. So uh, basically you can use Siri to, hi, uh, to hi, hail an Uber. We don't even have Uber here. That's how end of the earth Provincetown, Massachusetts really is. Next one is, uh, this is kind of cool, go into the phone settings. Go into phone here and you will see right here. See it says announce calls? Well now it can read to you basically who's calling. So if you have your phone in your pocket and you're like me and you're just like you're trying to get it out of your pocket but you can't, at least you know who you're not answering. Uh, so you can do always headphones in car, which is what I choose to do, headphones only or never. So that's a pretty cool new feature that you'll find there. Um, one thing I want to make a recommendation on is here in messages. Um, specifically, if you scroll down here towards the bottom, it says message history. Now, the three options for this are 30 days, one year, and never. The reason why I'm going to recommend that you consider 30 days is because even though the entire operating system of iOS 10 is really, really small, it's only about a gigabyte, I think, right now, um, that's before updates. Uh, the amount of features that it brings in that have the ability to take up space, especially in text messages, which we're going to be getting to in a little bit, um, they can add up really quickly. And in all of my past classes that I've taught about how to get back space, that's usually one of the first places we start is your text messages. So you might want to consider, unless you have something critical, you might want to consider doing 30 days instead of a year or forever. Um, very, very cool features in text messages, which we're going to be getting to in a little bit. Um, oh, also, I did want to mention there, sorry, um, here at the very bottom of that menu, we have low quality images mode. So when you send a photo, you know, these days the, the cameras on these phones is getting more and more advanced. So therefore, the size of that file that you're texting is getting larger and larger. Now, that's not a problem if you're on Wi-Fi, but if you're doing it over, over cellular, you might want to consider turning that feature on. So that's going to be person to person. I don't text a lot of photos, so I'm going to turn that off. Um, I'd crack a joke right now, but it's just way too easy. Uh, let's scroll down here and go into maps. All right. So here in maps, one of the things you'll notice 
is we have extensions. Maps has the ability to talk, just like Siri, to other apps. So check out the ones that you have available. You might want to consider putting those in there. Uh, Safari, check this out. Now, I'm not an idiot, so I'm not gonna actually open it because I don't wanna traumatize everyone and end my career early. I figure I'll give it at least a few more years before I make that stupid mistake. Passwords. Access to all of your saved passwords is way easier than ever before. This was a very good move. So for those passwords that you just cannot remember, I still recommend the app 1Password. I'm not going back on that. But if you want to get into your passwords, just go here into the Safari settings and go to passwords and it all opens up, which is also a little bit scary. Um, Next one we have here, ooh, this is a good one, is videos, okay? So scroll through here, playback quality. So if you're watching videos and you're on Wi-Fi, of course you don't care, you know, you want probably the good quality. But when you're on cellular, probably not so much because keep in mind, if you're downloading better quality video on cellular, it's gonna eat up more of your data. So that's one to definitely check out and you can either go here into best available or good, whichever you prefer. Next feature, which we're going to be talking a lot about in upcoming uh, classes that we're going to be doing, is the brand new Home app. So basically, this is the ability for Siri to be able to turn your house into a smart home. Now, for those of you who don't know, um, I uh, turn my home here into a smart home. And uh, there's a lot of gadgets that I use to do it. It's the, the price has come way down from what it used to be. But I do want to give a quick shout out to one of my absolute favorite um, aspects of my lighting system. Um, so I, I, I'll say I used to be, used to be a very big fan of Philips Hue. And it still has some pretty cool features. But there's another company that's come out that's done a way, way better job, and that is, I'm gonna blank on the name of them, so hold on one moment. Lifex, L-I-F-X. Um, these are little bulbs that you can get. We'll include links to them uh, in the description of the video. But they're, they're smart bulbs, and they can turn so many different colors, it's crazy. Like, if you want to host a party, your lights can sync to the beat of the music. I mean, they can flash every different color. They can strobe. I mean, it's pretty cool. And I will just throw this out there, but um, you'll notice that on mine it does say bathroom. Um, I am able to sing in the bathroom to purple rain while the rain is purple. So, you know, take that. Some of you just lost respect for me. Um, also, very good for the bedroom. Leaving it at that. Just. Floating that out there, those of you romantics, you know what to do. Get those puppies. Um, the big reason, but what blah, blah, the big reason, by the way, why I like them is there is no hub. The light bulbs talk directly to the internet, and they are awesome. Big big fan. Uh, I do have to say that the in regards to the home app. Um, there's a few features that I really wish that it had that it just doesn't have. So for example, you can tell it, you know, I'm home, and so you hit with one button and all your lights come on. There's no way currently to create scenes. So other than just like on or off, it doesn't get really detailed. So um, Apple, I'm guessing you probably already thought of this, but I, I would love to uh, be able to do a little bit more playing with how that works. It might be just that the other apps haven't updated yet and I am willing to totally admit that. Um, you can also share access to your home if you go here to automation, okay? You can um, basically link up uh, your, you can let your friends and family also have access to your smart home products. So that's just one of them. Next one um, is a feature that I have to say uh, Mr. Mark Collier introduced me to that I totally miss somehow. This is a great feature and I'm gonna use this all the time. So uh, here's a little dummy email that I put together. Now my cursor right now is at the end of the message, but let's say I want to add in a sentence in between there. So normally what I have to do is I have to press with my finger and kind of like, you know, hover, you get the little magnifying glass and let go, right? Check this out. Now this is only available on for those of you who have phones with 3D touch. So the 6S, the 6S Plus, the 7, and the 7 Plus. Okay? You're going to force touch the space bar. And now you can drag your finger and it's just like a mouse. See? I can tell it exactly where to go. Pretty cool, huh? So that's a really, really cool feature. 
Next feature I want to show all of you is a really great little, very simple button here in the mail program, which is the ability to filter by unread messages. If you look here at the very bottom left corner, you tap on that little button, all of these were unread. I, by the way, I am horrible at email and my fans will attest to it. I'm sorry. I just, it's a little bit on the crushing side right now. So if you hit that little button at the bottom left, it's going to just boom, take all of those unread messages and move them to the top to your attention so that you can give them a new chance to be completely ignored. <clears throat> Next feature we're talking about is Control Center. So Control Center uh, is the, where you get to by just taking your finger at the bottom of the screen and slide up to the top. Now, again, this is one of those features that is only available on the newer phones with Force Touch. Some of these features here now have Force Touch. So for example, uh, this is one of Mark's favorites, Flashlight. So if you Force Touch, the flashlight, you can choose between bright light, medium light, and low light, which is especially nice if you have to use it at night and the person sleeping next to you doesn't want to be just woken up like they're on camera. Uh, also, basically all of the apps, all of the little um, icons we have here at the very bottom, these all have it. So for example, the timer, okay? With one tap, I can just set a timer for one hour, for 20 minutes, for five minutes, or for one minute. Very, very cool. Uh, calculator, what it's gonna do is it's gonna just copy your last result. I don't know why that would be really necessary unless it's a very long number. So I guess that could be, oops, I guess that could be helpful. And then camera. So we get those take selfie, record slow-mo, record video, take selfie. Again, just uh, all really fast ways to get into doing things. Another feature I wanna just mention, um, I don't know if I'm able to uh, record it here, so we're gonna try it and see if it works. So from the lock screen, yep, I think we can do it. Uh, if you slide from left, uh, some right to left, you'll go straight to the camera. So it's faster than ever before. If you want, if you want to snap something fast, that's the way you got to do it. You got to just, from the lock screen, swipe. I already was there. Yeah, all right, you got it. That's how you do it, okay? You can also go left, by the way, and get back into your widgets. Worth mentioning that too. Uh, let's see here, last few. Uh, notes, uh, let's go into notes, which I have in a folder called writing. Here we go. Okay, when you start to write a note, you're gonna see this little icon here at the very top, uh, the little uh, person with the plus symbol. If you hit that, you're gonna be able to collaborate with other people, so just another kind of cool feature. Um, and I tend to think that that feature um, now makes notes a pretty interesting competitor to some of the other apps out there, like Evernote and OneNote. I still think they're probably better, but it's definitely getting closer. So what I want to do right now is I want to take a minute. I want to give you one of my favorite features of iOS 10. It is cheesy, yes, but it is hilarious and it is awesome. And this feature works with everything. It works with messages. It works with Facebook. Um, I believe it works with email, although I have not tested that yet. But the most important two are text messages and Facebook. So um, basically now there are apps that can interact with your messages. So you can add like GIFs and that kind of thing. So here's what I'd like you to do. Go to the App Store and I want you to check out JibJab. So JibJab, if you've never heard of them, it's a uh, service, I guess you could say. They put out all of these hilarious videos and what you do is you can take your face and put it on a character. So like, I'm gonna give you an example of how to use the app right now. So see my face here at the very bottom? So I'm gonna tap on that, okay? And we're gonna hit the little plus add face. You can see that I've done this a few times clearly. Um, this is absolutely my favorite app. So, oh, you're now seeing my ceiling. So what you wanna do is try to align your face. This is gonna be interesting because you'll see it from both sides. All right, and um, you can either smile or you can make a silly face. So um, I think I'm gonna do a, uh, I'll do sexy face, ready? Hold on, get the hair in there. Okay, so now what you're gonna do is you're gonna use your fingers and you're gonna just kind of move your image around and you wanna fit it right in like that. I usually don't get it perfect, but I have a weird shaped head, I guess. I think that's what they're trying to tell me here. When you're done, hit the little green check symbol. 
Okay, and so now if you look at all of these, it's taken my image and it's put it on top of all of these different characters. Now I find this a wonderful way to wish someone a very happy birthday. So I thought we would uh, take a moment and make fun of a friend of mine who's also a client. Um, and for those of you who have been following what I've been doing here for a few years now, you know I was on the television show Shark Tank. So I thought we would harass Bruce Valanche. So it's not Bruce's birthday today, but we're going to pretend it is and we're going to send him a random message right now and he's going to probably figure this out later. Bruce and I were texting last night and I thought, um, by the way, we're both very, we both have a very, very sick sense of humor. So um, I'm going to go here into messages, messenger, sorry. Okay, and we're going to create a new message to Bruce Valanche. Here we go. All right, that's an interesting uh, text he sent me. So if you wanted to use this in what you're doing, check this out, this is how it works. So you see those three little dots there next to the thumbs up symbol? We're gonna tap on that, okay? And this brings up all of the various types, these are all considered types of keyboards, okay, that you have access to. So we have like Giphy now, which is a great one. Uh, I use them all the time, although I think I'm gonna start using JibJab a lot more. And once you've installed the JibJab app, you can hit open right here. Okay, so now what you can do is go here to the little search bar at the top and you could type in the word birthday or I see it listed right there. So I'm gonna tap on birthday and these are images of me for birthdays, okay? And there was one that I found that I really liked. Um, I think I'm gonna do this one of me in uh, some sort of an, an odd dress with honeybees and cake. It's very disturbing and therefore it's perfect for Bruce Valanche. So I'm gonna hit send and voila, send photo. There you go. And we'll see how Bruce replies later on. So uh, hopefully not during this live broadcast, not during this live recording. Um, hi Bruce, how you doing? Uh, by the way, did I mention I was gonna put you in my video? Yeah, forgot to mention that part, oops. Um, but you can also do that, let's go back to where we really were gonna talk about this in text messages. So let's go through that whole section here. First, let's go with images. So tap on the little camera symbol, okay? You can uh, launch, you can see right now you're seeing my table, but you can also see these are videos I was recording. <gasps> my new drone, I love it, I just got it. I haven't cracked, even taken it up yet. Um, and now let's say you want to mark up the image, okay? So if you tap on the image and you wanna just send it, just hit that little blue arrow, but if you wanna mark it up, you're gonna tap on the image. And from here, you're gonna hit mark up at the bottom left. Okay, you can pick your color. So I'm gonna just stick with red. Now below that, you'll see we have three little buttons. The first one is to just simply like draw, okay? Let's go back. And the next one is to magnify. So you can use your fingers and you can pinch. Oops, sorry, rather. Uh, see the green and blue dots? That's the zoom level. And then the blue dot expands Thing's pretty sick, isn't it? That's actually one of these ones where when it takes off, the legs go up so the camera can do a full 360. Fun videos to come on that one. Uh, and then we have text here at the bottom right. So uh, the one thing I wanted to tell you about text is that if you're going to, whatever you're gonna do, pick your color first. So like, let's do white, okay? Then your font, which is just a little A, big A. And you can drag it to the right if you want to make it larger or smaller. You only get an access to three fonts, so let's go with Helvetica. And now you can double type on your text and say, hi. And that's it. Hit done and it will send. Very, very simple. Now the other features that we have access to here, let's go to the heart one. Um, you can tell that I'm not like totally in love with this feature, but anyways, you can, you know, do a little drawing, which makes no sense. Uh, I'll hit the little X there. Um, you can tap and you'll do like a little circle, which I guess is cool for some people. Mark is now probably realizing that I'm recording. If you press and hold, you can send a fireball and that means so much. What, what does a fireball mean? Um, uh, never mind. Um, and then if you hit the little arrow here, you can also kind of get more space and you can, you know, write something if you want. So that's those little features. You can also, let's go back here, sorry. 
hit that little video camera and you can draw on your face because apparently that's a thing now. At least you know legitimately that I don't like that feature, right? Okay, let's get out of that. That's stupid. Um, finally, we have photos. So photos got a bit of an overhaul. Now you can do slideshows uh, easier than ever. So it'll kind of go through your photos and figure out where and when you took them and put them into little compositions here. So for example, I took a little trip to St. Martin, which uh, looks beautiful, not going back. That was fun. So you can hit like the little play button and relive the memories. Oh, look, that was the best part. Okay, we're gonna do a lot more uh, uh, video on the Photos app coming up very soon. So we'll, uh, we'll focus much more on that later on. Uh, and then uh, that's about it. So what I want you to do is leave us a comment below. Let us know what are your favorite iOS 10 features. Hope you enjoyed this. Again, if you uh, missed any of those apps or if you're curious about what some of uh, Mark and my favorite apps are, we'll put tons of links in that PDF guide for all of you. Check it out. This is David Acox with Tech Talk America, class dismissed.